Chapter 3.11 Physical Power Based Resource Control Don't hate the player, hate the game. Ice T. Reference 69. Chapter 3.11.1 There may not be such thing as fair in nature, but there is such thing as fit. Systemic security is a trans-scientific phenomenon that forces us to confront frustratingly unquantifiable variables like ethics and design considerations. There is almost always a trade-off between what's good and what actually works, both from an ethical perspective and from a design perspective. One of the most frustratingly trans-scientific questions for any pack animal, to include sapiens, is how to settle property disputes. What is the right way to establish control over animal packs, precious resources, and to achieve consensus on the legitimate state of ownership and chain of custody of property? This is fundamentally a question that cannot be answered objectively. However, it is possible to observe nature and independently verify from empirical observation what peck and order heuristics are employed by nature's top survivors. In other words, it's possible to see what a good resource control what yeah, what a good what good resource control designs are by simply choosing to define good as demonstrably capable of survival in a contested, congested, competitive, hostile environment filled with predators and entropy. Another way of saying the same thing is that regardless of whether people believe that might is right, is right, people can't deny that it survives. The ubiquity of might is right in nature proves that proof of power is a highly effective survival strategy and a time-tested power projection tactic that has proven itself over hundreds of millions of years. To be able to keep pack animals systemically secure against predation, intelligent, physically powerful, and aggressive animals survive and prosper, period. Humans are incontrovertible proof of this basic fact of life. Therefore, if we have ideological objections about might is right, we should also have the intellectual humility to recognize that we have a fiduciary responsibility to the survival of our own species to recognize that these ideological objections are just that, ideological. As the mantra goes, don't hate the player, hate the game. That fact that Mufasa kills the cubs or that Mother Goose kicks the runt of her nest, kicks out the runt of her nest, isn't something to condemn or lament. That if there's anything to condemn or lament, it's the fact that we live in a cold, hard, cruel, and unforgiven, unsympathetic, I tried guessing at that next word, unsympathetic world filled with predators and entropy, where it's necessary to kill cubs and abandon runts to survive and prosper. As much as any organism might prefer not to, they all must fight to survive. Welcome to life on Earth. The takeaway, there's no such thing as fair in nature. Fair is a subjective and unquantifiable ideological construct that apparently only humans, the most physically powerful and destructive apex predators on the planet to date, ideological construct that apparently only humans are capable of thinking about. There is, however, such a thing as fit in nature. Fit is something we can objectively quantify and independently validate through empirical observation, simply by observing what survives. So the primary question to ask is, what power projection tactics do pack animals employ to be fit for survival? This question leads us to physical power hierarchies. Chapter 3.11.2 Why are physical power-based dominance hierarchies so fit for survival? What makes physical power-based resource control strategies like feed and breed the powerful first more capable of survival? Primordial economics provides a simple explanation. 
borrowing from the three strategic options for survival outlined in sections 3.6 and 3.7, how a PAC chooses to settle disputes, establish con control authority over resources, and achieve consensus on the legitimate state of ownership and chain of custody of property can cause an emergent effect of either increasing the PAC's BA more than CA, option number one, increasing BA the same as CA, option number two, or increasing CA more than BA, option number three. The survivor's, the survivor's dilemma indicates that option number three is the optimal emergent behavior. This could explain why feed and breed the, powerful pr the power projectors first represents an optimal strategy for managing internal resources but it ensures the most powerful and aggressive PAC members with the most capacity and inclination to systemically secure the PAC by imposing severe physical costs on attackers are well-fed and multiplied. This helps the PAC maximize its CA and minimize its BCRA to generate enough prosperity margin to grow resource abundance without substantially increasing the threat of being devoured or domesticated by neighboring organisms. Organizations which employ feed and breed the powerful first are more likely to have lower BCRA than organizations which use alternative pecking order heuristics, as illustrated in figure 26. But when more PACs adopt the this, this same pecking order strategy, it drives the environment's hazardous BCRA level down and compels other PACs to adopt the same strategy. This makes feed and breed the power projectors yet another power projection shilling point, which organizations are strategically inclined to adopt. Hence, it's both, hence its ubiquity in both wild, in the in both the wild and in human society. If neighboring animal packs are feeding and breeding their power projectors, then your organization must feed and breed your PAC's power projectors too, else risk becoming an attractive target of opportunity. And then we have figure 26 here, with the pecking order, and how that affects the BCRA. Chapter 3.11.3. Model and physical power based resource control protocols. It is possible to model the physical power based resource control protocol using system theory, the system theoretic processes. If we treat an animal pack as a system and treat security and survival as complex emergent behavior of that system, then we can conclude that security and survival are complex behaviors which emerge from the structure of individual components within the pack as well from the interactions between and among those components. By modeling these individual components and their interactions, it is possible to compare them to other resource control models to determine if they might share similar emergent effects. This will be done in the following chapter with a different type of resource control structure developed by agrarian sapiens, known colloquially as governments. For this thief, for this thief, for this thesis, the controlled process we want to examine is a state of ownership and chain of custody of a PAC's valuable internal resources. With the controlled process formally defined in figure 27, the next step in modeling a physical power-based resource control protocol is to model the controllers within the system. By default, every member of an animal pack doubles as a system controller with some amount of control authority over the controlled process. We can call these controllers members and treat them as a component within the system capable of executing certain control actions. In addition to members, PACs have specialized workers genetically optimized to project power. These workers have specialized, have special control authorities which members don't have and can therefore be represented as different controllers within the system we can call these controllers power projectors.
another controller within an animal pack's physical power-based resource control protocol is one that has control authority over the entire pack, physics. More specifically, physical power, aka watts. Physics is a naturally occurring control authority to which all other system controllers are subordinate. We all obey the rules of physics, the laws of physics. No animal gets to unsubscribe from the control authority of physical power. No animal gets to unsubscribe from the control authority of physical power. This means both members and power projectors operating within an animal pack automatically subscribe to physical powers control authority as an involuntary control action, whether they like it or not. In return, physical power exercises control over the animal pack by giving power projectors the resources, physical power, needed to exercise control over the controlled process. Physical power itself can therefore be modeled as a controller which executes the control action of empowering power projectors. Together, physical power, power projectors, and members represent three controllers within an animal's pack's resources, within an animal pack's resource control system model. This is shown in figure 27. And it's shown in figure 27, part 104. Okay. As discussed at the beginning of this chapter, Resources are only owned insofar as able-bodied organisms are willing and able to project power to gain and maintain access to those resources. We can incorporate this concept in our model as two control actions assigned to power projectors, which they can exercise over the controlled process. One, gaining access to resources, and two, defending access to resources. Both of these control actions are shown in figure 27. Additionally, members don't get to eat unless power projectors are willing to use their power to gain and maintain access to the pack's resources, i.e. food. But even if power projectors are willing to use their power to gain and maintain access to, packs, to the pack's resources, members still don't get to eat unless power projectors permit them to eat. In other words, alphas can, can and often do deny some members of the pack from having access to the pack's internal resources. Pack members, therefore, must tacitly request access to the pack's resources, and power projectors must tacitly approve those requests. These two additional control actions are shown in Figure 28. <laughs> He's building it. Controlled process by controlled process, he's building it. Even though power projectors have seemingly disproportionate control authority over resources, members are not without their own form of control authority to provide a counterbalance. Members exercise substantial control over the controlled process by assigning value to the resources. This is a subtle but very important control action which often gets overlooked. That will become important to point out later in a discussion about Bitcoin. The ledger. All right. The need for power projectors to establish consensus on the state of ownership and chain of custody of resources hinges on the assumption that PAC members actually value those resources in the first place. If members don't assign value to the resources over which power projectors compete for control authority, then power projectors' control authority over those objects is practically useless. Members, therefore, have a unique ability to render their power projectors' control authority practically useless by simply revoking the value they assign to the resources controlled by power projectors. The reason why this control action is often overlooked is because it's rarely exercised by the majority of all species of, of pack animals. Most resources have existential importance, and that is virtually impossible for pack members not to value. For example, it's not likely that members of any species will stop valuing food, water, oxygen, and other physical resources which are essential for their survival. 
but the value of something of some resource sit but the value of some resources is flexible and prone to change for example the value of lakefront territory can change rapidly if the sun dries up the lake pack members could care less about their power projectors control authority over lakefront territory if they don't value it anymore why do you we value money members therefore have a oh. this control action is a major factor for human packs because sapiens often compete to exercise control authority over immaterial resources with abstract value like money a pack of sapiens could have the most dominant power projectors in the world but their control authority over abstract resources like money can be rendered useless if members simply decide to stop valuing that abstract resource with this subtle control action we complete our physical power based resource control model in figure 29 Part four, the complete build.